Thank you so much. Praise God for you today. Certainly wishing everyone a happy Memorial Day weekend. As we're celebrating, just as God has blessed this holiday weekend, we certainly pray that everyone's safe. We pray that everyone's in a wonderful climate, doing well, your family, your home, and everything is protected. Again, we're going to continue with our crown series. Today, we're kicking into the last one of the five heavenly crown series, and, and, and God is really blessed, and it really it builds up the first four or culmination as we get to the fifth. This probably will be the shortest one of the teachings of the crown series because this is given to a limited audience but it's still one so it's still a crown though that every believer should pray that that the individuals that need to be receiving this crown are doing the things that are necessary because when we do that the entire body of christ is blessed so again i'm lewis lee with the first african baptist church here in goldsboro north carolina where our theme is encouraging hearts changing lives and saving souls today we're going to be teaching on the crown of glory so again we, we've dealt with five total crowns I'm just going to go back to my notes here the first crown we dealt with was the incorruptible crown the second crown was the crown of rejoicing or, or what we call the soul winner's crown the third crown was the crown of life um, last week we dealt with the crown of righteousness and today we're dealing with the fifth and the final crown which is considered the crown of glory so before we begin to kick off into this brief i'll say we'll probably be together 10 to 12 minutes let us talk to the lord first god we thank you today we praise you and we magnify your holy name we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, God, that you're an awesome God. We speak your healing in the air. We speak your healing over our families, God. We speak your love in the atmosphere, God. Bless us and protect us and keep us in your loving care. It's in the wonderful name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. But today, the crown of glory is often referred to as the pastor's crown. Interesting thought. Now, when we were teaching from the book of Revelation several months ago, as we got into around about the fifth and the sixth chapter, I was very adamant that we, we as people are never to receive the glory because glory belongs to God. So if you ever see anyone saying glory to man or glory to this person or when our glory come, that stuff sounds all good and innocent, but all glory belongs to God. Nothing we do should be so that we could be bigger than someone or better than someone or have more position than someone. I love the old song when it says, don't exalt the preacher, don't exalt the pew, but lift the Savior up for men to see. For if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. John 12, 44 was taken from that text. So when you think about glory, glory belongs to Jesus Christ because he is the one that has paid and he is the one that is eligible to present himself before God and before heaven and all of creation as the supreme one that was born perfect, that walked perfect, that died perfect, that resurrected perfect. So only Jesus Christ is worthy of the glory. But this text, it speaks of the crown of glory. And I'm going to read for you from out of the book of Peter. I'm going to go to 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 4. The text says, the elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of Christ which is among you, taking oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. When the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. So listen to what Peter was saying right here. When the chief shepherd shall appear. So he was talking to all of the under shepherds. He said when, when, when the real deal show up, then he will give you a crown of glory. Why are we eligible to receive it? Because Jesus holds the keys to glory. So he is the one that is able to give this crown of glory. 
Peter was giving this text right here towards the end of his earthly ministry. And certainly Peter was a powerful voice in the body of Christ. But when Peter was speaking, Peter said, the elders which are among you, I exhort. So I'm putting all the elders and the preachers and the pastors, I'm putting you on notice right now, he said, who am also one. So I'm not telling you something that I do not subscribe to myself. I'm not telling you something that I'm not living myself. He said, but I'm putting you on notice right here. And I'm a witnessing of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. When he said he was a partaker of the glory, meaning that I'm eating of Jesus right now. I'm living the life that Jesus would have me to do. All of my life is for the cause of Christ. And that's the reason why when I say I'm a partaker of his glory, letting you know that if you're willing to live by God's law, if you're willing to die in the same manner that our Lord and Savior died praising God, then we also can be resurrected in the same manner. So when Peter said that, Peter said, I'm a partaker of the glory which shall be revealed. Then he goes giving some instructions. So this text right here ought to make false preachers and those that are playing around with the gospel and not taking the cause of ministry serious. This ought to make you really shake and tremble right here to think about this because can you imagine how embarrassing it's going to be to live your whole life preaching and teaching God's word for 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 years and your job was to teach God's people so that they can earn those first four crowns and then when God get to your part there's nothing there left from you. I mean th this is ridiculous right here. Can you imagine? Th this, can you ever thought about it? A barber does not have it. There's no reason for a barber to not have a good looking haircut. Why should your beautician have nappy hair? The man that owned the car lot ought not be driving no raggedy car. And so as ministers of the gospel, how can we say that we're giving out the word of life and what type of goals and what type of life are we living if we're not striving to do what God would have us to do so that not only that we can earn the crown that we're supposed to earn, but we can help our people grow along and be the absolute best that they can be for Christ. So when he began to talk about it, he said, listen, the first thing is feed the flock. You're not eligible for if you are not willing to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, then you're already outside of the running for this. See, God's not giving out any crowns for preaching a lot of theories and popular topics. But when he said feed the flock, the feed for the body of Christ is the word of God. People are hungry. People are out there dealing with the cares of life, problems on the job, problems on every side. People are dealing with the economy going up and down, political divide on every side. When they come to the house of the Lord or when they open up teaching or when we're giving teaching over the radio or when God is bless you to provide songs of Zion. Nobody have time for us to be playing around and not giving the truth and the real word of God because people are hungry for the word and it's the duty of those that are in leadership to feed the flock. And so when Peter said, you got to feed the flock and he said, and when I say feed the flock, I'm not talking about playing around with them. He said, feed the flock that is among you. Stop being so concerned about going all over and being so dynamic and catching the thousands and the tens of thousands and having this mega thing that we fail to see what's right in front of us. Everybody that God give us an opportunity, we ought to be living for the Lord. If you only have your house to talk to, you ought to talk to your house about the goodness of the Lord. If nobody will listen to you but your neighbors, tell your neighbors about the goodness of Jesus. If at a big church, small church, country church, city church, everybody needs to hear the word of God. And so when Peter said, you got to feed that flock. And he said, because they belong to the Lord and don't be looking for somebody. He said, but be he said, not only do we feed them, he said, but not by constraint. Nobody should have to make you do what you're supposed to do. Not by constraint. The gospel of Jesus Christ is serving God. God is so dynamic that once we get over ourselves, we ought to be excited about serving and giving God the glory and giving God the praise because he's worthy to be praised. I, I can explain them all day long. I mean, when I think about God and I think about the different names for God, I still have to call him a true and a faithful God. He He's a God that's a God of his word. He's an honest and a just God. He's a God that 
always gives more than what we deserve. He's an on-time God. He's concerned about our needs and he's there to help us and to lift us up and to give us strength on every side. So when you think about God and who he is, he, Peter said, you don't have to be doing it with nobody constraining you to do it, but do it willingly. Be excited about the goodness of the Lord and not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Now those are two different characteristics right there, two different qualities. Qualifiers. The first thing is not a filthy lucre. Enough ought to be enough. I mean, we got this situation in the world that's then got out of hand when we start speaking of prosperity preaching. Something is wrong when the preacher is the only one prospering. Prosperity preaching ought to be so that all of God's people can prosper. And yes, you need to take care of your leaders. Yes, you need to do what's right. Yes, you need to be honorable and do the absolute best that you can do because God's going to hold the leaders of the local church accountable for how you take care of taking care of your man of God. The Bible says that the, the, the man of God is worthy of double honor. So this is not saying not to take care of people, but a filthy lucre enough is enough. If your ministry is defined by how much money you got or the material things or what's going on materially, then you've already lost everything. And, and this right here is not because that has become the topic rather than the cause of Christ. But when Peter said, neither for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. See, you cannot be of a ready mind if you always try to get some money out of the pot. Peter was simply saying, you ought not be owned by anybody. It doesn't matter about what people have, or what people do, or what people, it doesn't matter. What matters is when you're called upon by God to do what God would have you to do, he said you ought to be ready to do what the Lord said do. You ought not be owned by anybody. And think about this church. Everybody that's listening that's a part of a church, consider your pastor and pray for your pastor. But also, I want to give a litmus test out there. When you think about it, do you consider your man of God owned by anybody? If you think that's the case, then you need to be in prayer that God will begin to radiate this scripture in his life so that he can step out of that situation. You don't want people in leadership positions that are owned by someone and doing it by constraint, but we ought to be free and the word of God ought to be the word of God no matter who getting it and who listening to it. Don't have it so that you can be bought for a dinner or bought for a special check or a bonus or something. Don't be caught up in that stuff like that, but be free of mind so that you can all always stand on the truth of the word of God. He said, neither as being lords over God's heritage. Don't be tricking folks and thinking that you own people and putting burdens and stuff on people, but give it as if it's God's heritage. Take care of people, acknowledging that you're taking care of the children of the most high God. And he said, and being examples to the flock, Peter closed it off to say, it ought to work in our lives before we go experimenting on somebody else. I want to trust God the best I can because I know that if you trust God, he'll make a way. I want to pray to God as much as I can because I know that prayer changes things. I try to live the best I can live because I know that there is victory in a well-lived life and I'm not the only one. There's someone listening that you know that since you've learned how to live right, your life then took a different turn and since you've learned how to walk holy. So Peter said, being examples to the flock. And then he said, when the chief shepherd, when the Lord Jesus Christ shall show up on the scene and he shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. So that's what God is saying. When the chief shepherd show up on the scene, so all the pastors, he got one, a final one for you. When Jesus show up on the scene, this is not going to be something that's going to be pre-distributed or distributed in an alphabetical order. The Lord Jesus is going to show up on the scene and he's going to crown those pastors that are committed to the cause of Christ. And how do you know if you've been committed to the cause of Christ? Well, let me tell you how you know when you're putting yourself 
in the position to get a crown of glory. The first thing is you got to teach your people how to earn that incorruptible crown. You ought to be teaching people to live a life that's pleasing in the eyesight of God. Don't have folks working for you, but have them working for the cause of Christ and doing it for the right reasons. You shouldn't be doing it so that your pastor can recognize you. Some man or some woman or someone in leadership can recognize who you are and what you're doing. Teach people to do it to the glory of the Lord, because if we do it to God's glory, then it does not fade away. The second one, you ought to be instructing people to be ready for the crown of rejoicing. The crown of rejoicing is the crown of soul winning. The greatest gift you can give to the flock of Christ and the greatest thing we can do as Christians is try our best to lead folks to Christ when God give us that opportunity. He'll make it plain for you. He'll deal with you on it. And you will have those intimate moments when you can lead folks to Christ. And the first thing we can start doing to help us get there is we need to start asking God to bless and lead our steps so that someone could be led to God. And there's rejoicing in heaven. There's a crown. The third one is the crown of life. Now, there's nothing you can do in preparation for this but the crown of life is saying, be ye steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. When problems and trouble and hurt come your way, just stand on the word of God. When people are afflicting you on every side, stand on the word of God. When trouble on every side, stand on the word of God and know that God will make a way. The fourth one is the crown of righteousness. This is a crown that's given based on the attitude that we bring in the body of Christ. Now, Christians, a lot of Christians are disqualifying themselves for this crown because we got attitude problems. Stop being so mad about everything. Stop being so mean tempered all the time. Put some kindness in your voice and be excited about the days that the Lord is coming. Ever met a complaining Christian that I mean every day they get a cough, they claim they got COVID, they get an itch, they claim they got skin cancer, something going wrong with the eyesight. The next thing you know, they claim they're going blind. Everything is magnified in their life. And God said, that's not what the believer, ought, that's not the way we ought to be taking stuff. No matter what come our way, we ought to be rejoicing in the things of the Lord. And if you do these things, and if you teach these things, and if you lead in these things, and be an example in these things, then God said, for the pastors that are doing right, I have the crown of glory, which the chief shepherd shall give. So let's do a quick read. Recap. What, what do I need to do to get on the path for the incorruptible crown? The first thing I advise everybody is daily go into a, a moment of prayer and say, Dear Lord, help me that everything I do come from a sincere heart. That's what you got to do to get started. No matter what you're doing, even if you're ushering at the door, singing at the choir, you're working security, paying your money, paying your tithes, no matter what you do, say, God, help me to operate with sincerity of heart. If we operate with sincerity of heart, we will not be concerned about capturing somebody else's attention or making sure they knew it came from me or, or doing something that will get me on the front line. So the first thing we need to do is pray that we operate with sincerity of heart. The second one, the crown of rejoicing. Pray daily that my life will lead somebody to Christ. Just start your day off and say, dear Lord, help me today that I can operate with a sincere heart. God, lead me today that my life will be one that will lead someone to Christ. The third crown, the crown of life, dear Lord, give me patience that no matter what comes my way, I will trust in you and I will live for you. And the fourth one, the crown of righteous, and God, help me to always be excited that I have a God that's coming back to receive me again. Let's do a quick recap again. The incorruptible crown, start your day off. Lord, give me this day with a sincere heart. The crown of rejoicing, God, use my life so that I may touch someone that someone might be saved. The crown of life, give me the patience and the perseverance that no matter what come in my life, I can stand for you. The crown of rejoicing, help me, God, to always celebrate your name. 
whether it's being a better husband, whether it's having a better attitude as a wife, whether it's being a more respectful child, whether it's being a more diligent parent, whether it's being a better person on my job, help me, God, to get the crown of righteousness by rejoicing in the fact that I've been made right through Jesus Christ. Those are the things that encompass the five heavenly crowns. I thank God for you. Immediately following this lesson next Sunday, we're going to start a new series about the power of prayer. Uh, one of the things that God is truly blessed in, and I get excited about how the Bible gives direct ways to call it and receive blessings from God without a whole lot of messing around. See, we can empty ourselves and we empty our hearts and it seems like God has not heard. Well, hopefully the next series will help guide people, help guide all of the listeners that we can begin to tap into the blessings and the favor and the grace of God through a power-packed prayer. So I want to teach Christians how to pray for results, how to pray and receive with an expectancy that God is going to make a way. Thank you so much for tuning in. Before we leave, let's have this final word of prayer over this crown series. And I'll see you next Sunday. We'll be teaching again on the power of prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I pray for everyone that's listening. For someone, Father, that may be working hard but not certain of their work. Today, I pray that each and every one of us will operate with a pure heart. God, I pray that you will lead our lives, that people might be led to you by the life we live. God, give us the strength, the stamina, the escape, and the blessings that when hardship come our way, we can stand on the word of God. God, help everyone, Father, to be excited about Jesus coming back and excited about the salvation so that we may earn that crown of righteousness. And for every pastor and preacher that may be listening, Father, every teacher out there that's responsible for someone, I don't know the extent of your crown, Father. I, I don't know. You may even be extending this crown to the parent that lead their children, but everyone that's eligible, Father, and responsible for teaching and leading people, God, help us that we can lead people in the path of righteousness for your name's sake, so that we may earn that crown of glory. It's in the wonderful name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. May God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we pray that everyone listening has a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If you've never surrendered your life to Jesus, just simply at this moment say, Dear Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. Thank you for paying the price on Calvary's cross. And today I ask you to come live in my heart forever. If you would do that, God has promised in his word that he will live in your heart. And immediately you will begin to see God doing reconstruction as we pray that God will place the right people in your life that you can grow in grace. May God bless you and heaven smile upon you.